Hi, this is BK from ManforWars.com and ManforWars Media, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide, offline, locally teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and uh, to help the same polite patriots worldwide, offline, locally discuss and share great info they find online as better people making better places to live. Give your neighbors a chance to hear something different, think for themselves, only way they can, share some valuable insights and websites and so on, and uh, and get better politicians of results and get, get better customer service from your governments as more informed and empowered people can force bad leaders to do the right thing uh, or help good leaders do the right thing knowing they've got popular support for it. So that's a key. See the description below for what we can do today about this COVID-19 issue as well. Um, but uh, with respect to this vlog, this is called Socialist Media. Uh, how AI bots make us AI bots or goldfish eating, pooping, and forgetting bits of crap. Socialist media. How AI bots make us AI bots or goldfish eating, pooping, and forgetting bits of crap, right? Um, and social media or socialist media, if you want to check a, a pun on that, and I'll go through why that is uh, very much the case. AI bots, artificial intelligence, we know about that, about that being out there, sort of computers thinking sort of like humans, right? Or even in video games, there's the characters that are controlled by people, then there's the NPC non-player characters, which if you're in a video game and you interact with, you're like, okay, this is the video game controlling this, this is not another person controlling this character. Fair enough, so there is that difference. Um, and then goldfish, eating, uh, pooping, and forgetting bits of crap. Because that's what goldfish do. Goldfish have very tiny attention spans. I mean, they'll swim around a little bowl, you know, like this big, and they'll just swim around in circles, and they'll eat, and they'll poop, and they'll forget, and then they'll eat and poop and forget, and eat and poop and forget, and that's how they spend their lives. And we can often do that uh, thanks to social or socialist media, and I'll get into some of the issues. So <clears throat> I've got a couple of points to make, and I apologize. I know it's out there. I know it's a big thing. I know we're all supposed to use it. We're all supposed to teach kids to use it. It's supposed to be a huge part of our lives now. But at the same time, um, you know, we should warn about this. And, you know, like, like if what I'm saying is stupid, then laugh at it. And if what I'm saying is smart, then enjoy it and possibly share it uh, with people you know so they can benefit from, from ideas like this as well. Um, but I'll get into uh, what this vlog is about. Um, so, um, you know, and I might be dating myself. I'm old enough to remember a world before social media. But if I'm dating myself, I think I'm worth it. So, hey, happens. Lucky me. Now, um, the first point is um, there's many studies that have come out and they show how social media causes anxiety and depression, reduces our attention spans, uh, and so on, right? Um, the people that, that, are, that you see... Uh, on Instagram, right, they're kind of share, or, or Instagram or Twitter or wherever, but Instagram, for example, they're sharing kind of a highlight of their life, and they're carefully scripting that to get as many likes and followers as possible. But in real life, that's just a highlight, or that's just a staged highlight. But then they're anxious about how many likes or whatever they're going to get when it comes to that, right? And so there, the people making them are, are, are often upset, right? Whereas the people looking at them are like, wow, their life is so great. Man, my, I wish my life could be like that. Not realizing it's just a highlight or it's just a staged highlight or it's just whatever, right? So the people making them are often kind of depressed and anxious and stressed about it. And the people looking at them are all also often depressed and stressed and anxious. There's many studies out there which you can find on your own if you do uh, a search for them, right? Now, um, another point on that is uh, Sean Parker, right? Sean Parker is one of the founders of Facebook, right? He, he helped start it. Uh, he was in there early with Mark Zuckerberg and, and others to sort of develop Facebook into a tool for people at universities to connect with each other and stay connected, you know, as they left university and so on, right? Um, and so that's all it was initially, right? But then it kind of morphed into something obviously much larger now with, you know, 2 billion, 3 billion people in the world on Facebook or whatever it is, right? But Sean Parker, one of the founders of Facebook, he came out in an interview. So I recommend you look up Sean Parker Facebook interview or Facebook founder interview. Um, he, he came out and he said he was horrified at what he and what they had done. Just absolutely horrified. Um, he just could not believe it, could not believe how many people were addicted to Facebook, how they designed it to be addictive. They designed it to be, in many ways, sort of like a slot machine at a casino. It's like, why do you, why do people sit at the slot machine, put in a dollar, put in a quarter or whatever, and keep put, you know, pulling the lever, expecting, you know, three apples to come up and ding, 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 you won. Here's a bunch of coins popping out. You won all this money, right? Why? Well, because that chance 
to 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 you know to possibly win, possibly be uh, 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 satisfied, possibly be happy, is um, you know part of the addictive process of it, right? And I've even found myself, for example, I'm an NBA fan, right? And also I'll give you two two brief examples, right? One is the Ringer NBA, right? Now, sometimes when I'm not looking into more important stuff, I like my NBA junk food. I like watching uh, basketball, professional basketball, NBA basketball. Uh, I also like reading sometimes about it, right? So if I go to the Ringer, which is a great website run by Bill Simmons and his team, and the Ringer NBA page, I can see really well-written articles about the NBA if I want to you know, I take my mind off, you know, rest of this crap and kind of get into some fun stuff, right? Really well-written articles, right? At the Ringer, the NBA, um, um, the Ringer NBA, right? Ringer slash NBA, whatever, right? Then, but sometimes that doesn't satisfy me as much as Hoops Hype. Now, HoopsHype.com is much more of a social media style thing, much more of sort of a, a Twitter style uh, website where they just post updates from all over the NBA, Right, so they post different articles or different videos or different this, different that, and you can just scroll through there and be like, okay, this is the latest transaction, this is the latest this, this is the latest that, and I'll find, and I talked to a buddy of mine about this, just talking about how it psychologically affects me. While I'm looking for an article as good as I'll find at the Ringer NBA uh, section of their of the Ringer.com website, at the NBA section, the Ringer NBA website, basically, right? While I'm looking for articles that good. My sometimes when I'm on hoops hype, I'm excited about the possibility of finding articles that good, and so the possibility makes me more interested in looking at it and going, oh, neat, you know, this is great. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, instead of just reading this really good, you know, thousand word article or whatever, I'm going, man, I wonder if I could find a thousand word article, right? And so, you know, that's how it psychologically affects me. And I think everybody to some degree, right? So, um, you know, so that's important to know is that it's designed to be addictive and it's designed. And so it's not even, you might find stuff you like, but the idea isn't to find stuff you like. It's to be addicted to looking for stuff, to be addicted to the possibility of finding stuff. So that's a very, very strange thing to do to our brains, right? So got to be wary of that. Um, <clears throat> the second point is... I've personally warned about this stuff for over 10 years, right? Uh, as an artist, journalist, uh, activist, businessman, and so on, I've done a number of things. Used to host a radio show, and um, you know, I you know, I, I used to talk about how the mass media, when Twitter, you know, first started getting kind of more popular, used to say, "And you can find us on Twitter at at CBS News, or you can find us on Twitter at CNN, or you can find us on Twitter at." And I used to be like, "Uh oh, this is weird. Why is all the media?" gravitating towards this one platform, right? Why are they all talking about, you can find us, we should all be on Twitter, everyone needs to be on Twitter, right? And I thought that was very strange at the time for all the media, because you'd think, okay, well, you know, obviously, you know, the media is controlled in some way, but whatever. The point is that when they're all hurting us towards Twitter, that's a bad sign, right? Um, now, um, you know, and I also said, I'm old enough to remember what twit means, twit, right? Like, you stupid twit. Right? It just basically means idiot, right? You stupid idiot. Like saying, instead of saying stupid idiot, you could say stupid twit, right? So twit er, or, or like a bird. Tweet, 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 right? Now they don't do, don't make any sense, right? It's not, you know, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to think of that Shakespeare. Oh, here we go. To be or not to be? That is the question. Well, it's nobler to whether well, it is nobler to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing end them. Right? That's how humans, at their best, speak. Like William Shakespeare, "To be or not to be," famous uh, speech from Hamlet. Right? But tweet, 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 tweet is what birds do. Right? So, you know, allegorically, you know, there might be people laughing at us who came up with this stuff. You know, maybe the. The, the, the really evil kind of uh, cynical, you know, uh, technological elite, scientific dictatorship minded people coming up with this and kind of laughing at it and having that be an inside joke that binds them together, that they play on all of us. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I remember that. And, and yes, it's practical to use today, but don't let it replace or screw up real life. That's my generic advice on that. Right. And I'll get into more um, when it comes to this. Right. Now, now, maybe, uh, as a third point, maybe I'm lucky that, you know, I've been sort of kicked off Twitter and kicked off Facebook after a fashion, right? 
kicked off Twitter for some tweet, typically about the trans kids stuff. Like typically they say, trans kids, no way, you, you hate trans people, you hate trans kids. It's like, no, no, no. I'm warning about the risks of this, you know, when it comes to, you know, all the health issues, lifelong infertility, dangerous drugs, uh, hormonal blockers retarding your brain and body development so you don't really mature and you're kind of dumber or weaker than you should be because you're not normally allowed to grow like you would. Uh, when it comes to 80, 90% of kids growing out of their gender dysphoria, when it comes to, you know, um, uh, you know, removing even the option to be gay, right? I mean, some guys will be like, well, I dressed kind of girly in high school, but I'm happy I didn't switch. I'm happy I still got my junk and uh, I can be a confident, happy gay guy, right? But instead rushing kids into that. And so um, that's a real important part of their agenda, if you want to put they in quotes. And, um, and so, you know, that, that gets my YouTube channel, channels banned. I gets my Twitter, you know, Facebook, whatever, right? Other things like that, right? Um, but anyway, kicked off Twitter, um, you know, and, and, and so on. And, um, you know, decided, all right, screw you guys, right? I don't want to jump through your hoops. Facebook, right? They wanted me to, they wanted more information. So once I gave them some information about me, here, give us your phone number. We'll let you back on or whatever. All right, fine. Give us your email. All right, fine. Then they start asking me to snitch on my friends. Hey, we want you to talk about, you know, which five friends of yours you like the most. We're, we're doing a profile on you. And we're like, no, I'm not. Screw you people. I'm not doing that, right? I feel bad enough giving up my own shit to you people, but I'm not giving up my friends to you people, right? And just in principle, right? So fuck you, right? And so, um, so fuck Facebook. Um, but but I'm, I'm, I might be lucky in a way to get kicked off there because even when I was on there, I could see my smart friends turn into censored and self-censored, quiet, cucked crap online, right? And I'm, I'm, I got peers, right? I got peers, right? Now, now I've, I've tried to, you know, like Gavin McInnes in some ways, right? I'm still cool. The world is just less cool. And instead of going along with the world being less cool, I'm trying to save cool and save how people can still be cool, still be cool with each other and not be all worried and nervous and frazzled about the latest PC, politically correct, or personal computer updates of what we're supposed to be paranoid to say or do or how we should think or whatever now, right? Like, no, 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 that's dumb. That's a bad idea, right? So I'm still cool, still straight up with guys, nice to the girls, nice to me, cute kids, see that and go, that's a guy I want to be, you know, or a guy I want to see. And so fine, right? Whenever people can do that. But similar to Gavin McInnes, the famous sort of comedian and, and Vice Magazine founder, where he's like, no, 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 we had this figured out. All this racist sex stuff, we racist sex, we, we figured all this out. We don't need to worry about this again, right? It's We already fixed all this, right? We can focus on other things. We can already have all the answers to that simple, stupid stuff. And we can we can be cool and, and talk about fun or serious stuff. We don't need to do all that again. It's like, no, we have to be this racist, sexist, phobic. Oh, isn't it so bad? It, no, no, we, we, no. We, 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 I was around when it wasn't a problem because we'd already solved it. Right. So we don't need to relive those problems. Right. So I just want to explain kind of where I'm coming from on this because I'm still cool. Just the world got not cool. Still want to be cool. You're going to need people like me and Gavin and others to say, no, no, no. We don't have to be constantly messed up by this old stuff we already fixed, by these old problems we already solved. Just sort of recycle to screw us up again. This divide and conquer garbage. Right. Um, but back to this, I could see my smart friends on Facebook, for example, turn into self-censored, you know, and censored and self-censored, quiet, cucked crap online, right? And um, and the same could happen offline, where you know, if, if if you know, I see you and you see me, and we typically normal, hey, shit talking, cool guys, get along, great. But then online, I keep seeing, okay, so now you're you're not the same free speaking, shit talking, you know, fun loving kind of person that I knew. Now you're like. How can I say the most inoffensive, bland, random, stupid thing ever? Like, hey, new poll, name your five favorite Molly Ringwald movies. It's like, okay, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Pretty in Pink, you know. Man, you don't talk like that. You don't give a shit about that. Who are you trying to appeal to, right? What, what are you turning into, right? But if I see that happening online, then I might see that same person offline and go, hey, hey, so you're just into, you know, trying to get everyone to, to, to share what their five favorite Molly Ringwald movies are now. Okay, I, I guess I can't kind of talk, talk, talk to you much like a straight up cool badass dude with another badass dude just talking some badass shit. Can't do that anymore, right? So that tends to happen to people where I believe that that online filter changes how they see each other offline and they talk less about less because they see each other do that online. So that's very dangerous, right? Um, now, and, and even at a house party, right? 
the more people there, right, the less we can say, right? The more people there. And I don't mean at the house party in general, but the more people in the conversation at the house party, right? So for example, if you're, you know, if things are relatively quiet and there's like, you know, 20, 30, 50 people around and you're saying something, you know, you might just be like, party, woo, right? Say, yeah, party, woo, right? But then if you break off into smaller groups, right? Smaller groups of, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, people, five people or whatever, right? Then you can get into more stuff. You can be like, hey, what do you think about this? You know, what do you think about the war in Iraq? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Well, I heard it's a good idea. Well, I don't know about this. You know, what do you think about whatever, right? Like you could break off into, into different, you know, more serious topics and you could be sensitive um, to, 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 you know, what the people there can handle. And you can talk about anything for as long or as little as you want to, right? You can talk about business. How's work? Oh, it's great. You know, as an accountant, I follow generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP. Oh, what are those? Really? You want to know what generally accepted accounting principles are? Well, now that I've had a couple of beers and now that we're cool and we're just talking shit, might as well, you know? So, okay, cool. Well, this is what I do to make $100,000 a year and this is my job and this is what people pay me that for because, you know, whatever. And they could explain generally accepted accounting principles to me, right? If it's just the two of us or two, three of us at a house party separate from the other 50, 100 people there, right? Now, um, you know, when it comes to this, we're also sensitive about who joins, right? Who joins the kind of circle, right? So somebody comes over and, you know, the vibe changes, right? And we all know this, right? We all know this, right? A bunch of guys, a bunch of Rottweilers barking, rawr, 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 rawr. then cute poodle comes over. Hey guys, how's it going? You're not just like, rawr. she's like, ah, you know, you know, you don't know. Hey, oh, nothing. You know, what are you guys on about? Oh, nothing. We're just talking some shit. Oh, that's cool. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, she kind of joins in and you take the edge off that, that, that conversation a bit, right? And depending on how well people know each other, right? You know, people, you know, people know me as a, as a, as a polite Canadian patriot, right? And so they'll be like, what are you up to? I'm like, well, here's this, you know, or, you know, hey, you and your wife or your girlfriend are having a kid or something, you know, and so I don't want to talk to you much about this, but have you heard about vaccines? And like, oh yeah, yeah, I've got some issues. You know, I, I don't, I'm a little scared about needles and, you know, I'm, I believe obviously they might help, you know, but I'm a little bit worried. It's like, no problem. So we talk about it for a bit. Um, but if other people are around, then we obviously wouldn't get into it too much. And I might even take a little piece of paper, a little flyer with info on it, and just put it in his breast pocket and say, look, man, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get into this later. We don't want to get too heavy at a party, but just take a look at this. Put it in his breast pocket. Cool, man, thanks. You know, just get back into something else, right? But I'm just talking about the nature of parties and social interactions, right? And so when it comes to um, to 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 um, online parties, right? Um, you know, uh, 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 you know, um, Unlike email, for example, because email, you know, I we used, I used to have group email texts with my buddies, you know, like eight different buddies, the G8 buddies from, you know, we represented G8 nations or whatever, but just G8 buddies or other little groups of Patriot buddies or, or other, and you could talk more hip hop buddies, you could talk freely, you could shit talk in that little closed group, right? It's an email to eight, 10 people or whatever. That's the specific group, not to everybody at a party or everybody in the world, right? Um, but so unlike email, which is great, talking to everyone all uh, you know all the time often makes people say less about less more, right? Because you're saying this to everybody on your list of you know 500 or 5,000 Facebook friends, right? Generally speaking, right? You're putting this out to everybody, right? And so you have to be a little bit sensitive. You got mom, dad, grandparents there, aunties, uncles, you've got whatever, you've got maybe special Facebook subgroups and so on or, or whatever. But, you know, you, you, you definitely want to self-censor a bit, right? Because you're not, you don't say the same things to everybody. But when you try and say the same things to everybody, then you often say less about less more as opposed to more about more, right? Um, so, so that's an issue. And, and on that, um, you know, platforms like Gab, uh, Gab.com, where the founder, Andrew Torba, is out there publicly talking about his free speech goals. So he's not, you don't have to be as paranoid about him and his company as you do about maybe some others. But, you know, I recommend, you know, um, excuse me, migrating some family and friends over to more pro-free speech platforms where you know 
you, there, there's not as much censorship, there's not as much self-censorship, and you can talk shit. And just like in real life, just like in back in the day, when there were people that had, say, racist views or sexist views or whatever, <clears throat> unless they were so bad, they were genocidal, Hitlerian, and they would never even talk to anybody, right? If you can actually talk back and forth, you can realize that it's not that bad, there's some reason or rationale for it, but through the process of conversation, you can actually make them less racist or less whatever, right? And I've, I've talked to racists, you know, uh, people, excuse me, or people that you would call racist, right? And a lot of times racism isn't even like, I hate you people. It's I'm defending my people, right? And defending your people is certainly worth respecting by everybody, right? It's not so much about that. So, you, you, you know, you kind of say, look, you know, we can all respect people who defend uh, their own people and get to do their own thing with their people. And if we all had that as, as countries that were mostly homogenous around the world with control of our borders and cultures and economies and, and, and so on, right? Then even hardcore, quote unquote, white racists or black racists would be like, no, we're cool. You know, I'm a white racist, but I'm not really racist because we're all getting along great here. I wouldn't mind taking a trip to Africa and, and looking at the beautiful scenery and meeting some nice people, some proud, polite, patriotic Americans, know how to act where they are, know how to learn how to act where they go. I might, I'm down with that, right? Or some Africans might be like, no, forget it. We are Africans. We are proud, polite, patriotic Africans. But why not take a trip to America? We don't want to be American. We don't want to be white. But we wouldn't mind visiting some nice, proud, polite white people and uh, spending a couple of weeks there, spending some of our dollars. We know how to act where we live and we know how to learn how to act where we go. So no big deal, right? It's fine, right? And I've had people who were supposedly racist agree with me. They're like, yeah, you're right. You know, because it's not about... It's, it's, it's a lot of it's in self-defense and, and in normal conversations, you can beat that. Whereas often on the internet, it's just snarky, bitchy, blurred, shorter and shorter sentences. It's not a process where you're going back and forth. And as my buddy uh, Louis said, conversations are best when both parties evolve. And that is in conversations, not in snarky, bitchy blurts, right? So um, I just want to add that to kind of the, uh, the fuel for the fire here. Um, <clears throat> Now, the fourth point I'll talk about is control, right? Control, right? Now, um, in real life, as I said, you can go back and forth easily. You can evolve conversations and opinions and respect each other, right? Um, and, 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 but online, um, you know, it's, it's tougher to do that, right? It's tougher to really get into things the way you can get into things with real time, real speed of language, right? For example, if I was to tweet this vlog, it would probably take like 500 tweets. And who would, I wouldn't take the time to type it people wouldn't take the time to read it, right? So it's the difference between speaking and tweeting, right? Um, and online, many know about uh, censorship and shadow banning and so on, right? Now that's out there, right? The CEO or somebody, it might've been the CEO of YouTube or somebody high up at YouTube basically admitted that, yes, we know a lot of our users don't like, you know, shadow banning and censorship and, and us trying to control stuff to avoid hate speech and, and not nice things but we don't care, we're gonna do it anyway, right? So it's, it's sort of out there now, where it's just like, you still wanna use the platform, don't you? Right, we got cool stuff, a lot of people are here. If you're somebody that wants to reach a lot of people, you gotta use us, even if you use other platforms, right? So, so that's their attitude about this. So it's pretty much out there, right? Censorship, shadow banning, changing search results, you know, manipulating, you know, as opposed to the will of the people, well, a lot of people like this, so the algorithm reflects that, it's like, we don't care if a lot of people like this, we don't like it, we don't want people to see it, so we're gonna bury it, right? And that and demonetization and so on. So that's pretty much out there, right? But what about um, uh, what about uh, the total elevation of stuff no one likes to make it cool, right? What about the total control, not just kind of manipulating here and there, but literally taking stuff that no one likes or almost no one likes and making it cool. Can they do that on the internet? Sure. You know, they, they could do that on the internet, right? If I was to walk outside my house, right? And I was to beat a dog to death with a stick, you know, in front of my neighbors. And, you know, everyone heard the dog screaming and everyone came out, you know, to the to the you know front of their houses, right? And they were looking at me like, oh my God, that guy's beating a dog to death with a stick, right? And it's like, ah, we hate this. This is great. They'd run over, they'd stop me, they'd hit me, they'd punch me, they'd arrest me, they'd whatever, right? Because they hate that, right? But on the internet, what if the people behind where this video footage might be shared were to elevate that to be 
you know, really cool, right? Say, give it a lot of likes, give it a lot of thumbs for respect, give it a lot of prominence, give it a lot of views, right? Give it a lot of whatever. They could do that artificially. It's not a real, we like this, we don't like this. It's a people looking at what they think people like online, right? And that's an extreme example, right? But I just, I just made the point that could they do it with something that bad? Sure. They could do it with something that, that people don't like, right? They could do it with, you know, uh, other bad examples, right? They could artificially give something 10 million views on YouTube. It's like, hey, pedophile video of, you know, people doing creepy, weird things near kids. 10, 20 million views. Wow, look at that. Well, I want to see something with 20 million views. M might be just 2,000 creepy weirdos that, you know, should be stopped and arrested possibly, right? But they could give it that artificial bump with their algorithms, right? Um you know, or they could make it cool and make us think we like it because we think a lot of other people like it, right? Um, you know, and if we all chase thumbs for respect and the endorphin rush, right, then we could start reflecting that, right? Where it's, we go, well, I guess this is the cool thing to do, the cool thing to say, you know, that so-and-so, uh, but people are so racist, uh, like me, like me, like me. Uh, people are so sexist, like me, like, do you really want to think people are that racist and sexist? Do you really want to? Do people really want to? Do they really want to leave their house? and think, oh my God, there's so many Nazis everywhere. There's so many Nazis and racists and sexists and homophobes. Oh my God, are, the, 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 all, everywhere I go, there's just, these people are all scum. I just, it's just it's awful living here. No, but could they make it cool to do that on the internet? Yes, right, as part of socialist media, yes. So we have to look for that as a possibility and look for evidence to support that um, when it comes to you know uh, making firmer conclusions about it, right? And there's some out there. Um, <clears throat> but what if the platforms take the opinions of 1% of people or the 1%, if you use the Occupy Wall Street term, right? Um, and, and they make them, uh, they make them seem popular and then get us all to parrot them. And that's what I think often happens with all the virtue signaling, social justice warrior tweeting and so on, where they artificially, you know, make it seem like all of us, uh, should think like, you know, 19 uh, year old girls taking a social studies class in university. Right. Whereas like, no, these, these, you know, these 30, 40, 50 year old men, women are not like 19 year old girls who just learned some hardcore social justice, feminist, Nazi, everyone's racist, patriarchy. Uh, don't be homophobic. People are this and we have to overcome all this institutional this and people's biases that. And it's like, no, no, people don't think like that. People are nice. If you are nice, they are nice to you. Then it doesn't matter what your thing is, right? Your color, you, the, if you are not, then they are not. And that's that, right? That's the way to beat all that crap basically, right? That's why polite patriotism is so important. But but they could elevate us to think, well, I guess this is cool and I want to be cool on this platform. So I'll start speaking like a 19-year-old social justice warrior girl who by the time she's 22 or 23 and she's working in the real world, will have probably forgotten most of that commie zombie BS. But to be social with her friends and to go to protests and to, you know, whatever, and to chant and scream and think she's doing something good, then, you know, she'll do that. But then you grow out of that stuff, right? What they're doing now is they're retarding all of us into being that, as opposed to allowing young people to go through that and then to get past that and grow out of it. With the help of older people, they're turning older people into that because that's what, you know, if you want to be popular on socialist media, then you often have to reflect that type of thinking or be attacked by that type of thinking, which again can also be controlled and manipulated, right? So we can't take it as a real measure of how most people really want to feel, either really feel or really want to feel. It's a very artificial measure of that. Um, <clears throat> and um, so the next point here is um, reducing our language, right? Um, you know, uh, reducing our language. That's what this is This is also doing, where, you know, we, 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 we say less about less, right? And I'll give you an example. Um, in small towns, right, with not many people, right? Um, you can have uh, more formal hellos and, and, and convos and conversations, right? You can say in a small town, if I was in a small town, right? And I'd say, well, good morning, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm doing very well, sir. How are you? Good. Nice weather, isn't it? Sure is nice weather, you know? What did you think? Yesterday was pretty cold, but today is nice and warm. Yep, sure is nice and warm. Hey, have you been to the bakery recently? No, I have not. Well, the bakery, they've got some brand new bacon goods that are pretty darn awesome. Well, I thank you for the tip, sir. I, I will check out the bakery. You have a good day now. 
You too, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you too, right? You can have those conversations when you're seeing somebody every five minutes or 10 minutes in a really small town, right? Where there's not many people around, right? You can have those longer formal interactions, right? But in big cities, like I live in Toronto, uh, Canada, in big cities, um, you're much more uh, polite and brief at best, right? Um, you know, you just indicate to each other that you're not going to bother each other, and that lets you relax around a lot of people, right? So if I'm in Toronto, like, oh, hey, hey, you know, I get on the subway, there's 30, 40, 50 people there, hey, hey, straight up with guys, nice to girls, hey, you know, guys, not going to bother each other. Girls, eh, not going to bother you. Guys, yeah, hey, what's up, what's up, not going to bother each other. Girls, hey, what's up, yeah, not going to bother you. It's a man here, no big deal. Guys, man, what's up? What's up? Not gonna bother each other. Hey, what's up? Nice going. It's nice to be a little friendly or a little not, but no, no, don't be weird, right? And girls, you know, same, you know, just react. Eh, don't worry about it. It's a man sitting nearby. Who cares, right? Um, you know, he's, he's he's not he's not a problem. He's a solution, right? If he's not a problem, then he's a solution. Because if he's not a problem, you know, making people uncomfortable, then he's a solution. What if somebody makes you uncomfortable? Then hey, you man, you nice one. Yeah, help me with this, right? So no big deal, right? Um, but you're basically, you know, polite and brief, you know, at best, right? Um, now, when it comes to socialist media and, and texting, texting, it's it's often uh, the same, where because there's more and more people on these platforms, right? Um, we we have to say less and less, sort of by definition, right? Tweets 140 characters less, or now 280 or whatever. Gab has longer stuff, you know, than that. So I recommend gab.com, gab.com. Um, for their platform is one I use, though there's probably other good ones out there that, that people can recommend to each other. Um, but you say less and, about less to more and more people to keep up, and you chase likes and thumbs, right? You want to do this, and, ah, working on this. It's, it's, okay, I hope this works. And it's like eating a bag of potato chips, right? You can just eat that whole bag of potato chips, right? They're not that great, typically, right? Some may be, some may like potato chips more than me, right? But I've eaten a whole bag of potato chips, and I know at the end of it, I wasn't satisfied. It wasn't a good idea. I wasn't full, right? It was just the MSG, the salt, the, the habit of it, right? And so these are often potato chip conversations. And I've also spent some time, even on Gab, right? I've, I've tested this stuff, you know, before and recently, where I'm like, okay, so what if I actually spend a good two, three hours on here, right? And just go back and forth, furiously Gab, like, pass this on, repost, you know, retweet, comment, blah, 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 da, 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 da. I'm like, ugh. Right. And, and it's like, eh, you know, like, like goldfish eating, pooping and forgetting bits of crap. Right. I'm doing it. People seeing my crap are doing it. It's just, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a flow. Right. It's not like a, you know, this is solid. You know, this, this is solid. This was a good conversation. I'll remember this. Or we're solid. We have a good relationship. We connected well. It was great to see you. It was great to hang out. It was great to talk some shit right? It, that's not that, right? It's just sort of eating, pooping, forgetting bits of crap, right? Even some of that crap might be important, right? And I'll get into how, how to deal with that um, as well. But, um, you know, you end up um, using less words and letters and often just emojis, right? Because, you know, a lot of people, you know, today, if you go to an Instagram post, and I don't use Instagram, but I, I, I've seen it, obviously, and I've checked it out and you know, so on, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of times it's just Instagram, a fire emoji, you know, a happy face emoji, poop emoji, whatever emojis, frowny face, whatever emojis, you know what emojis are, right? And, um, and, 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 and when it comes to emojis, right, it's not even like your face. It's the face for everybody in the world, right? That smiley face is that everybody in the world smiley face, that frowny face, that whatever, that poop emoji, this is poop, that fire, it's not even you expressing it. It's not even you saying it. It's everybody. This is a happy or LOL or everybody, right? It's it's not a unique thing. So we're getting less and less unique as we turn into uh, commie zombies or compliant corporate clones through social media or socialist media, right? So it's very, very dangerous to do that, to be talking in emojis back and forth. And I typically, you know, don't do this, right? I'll give you an example. And I'm, I, won't, uh, I won't show you much of it to keep... Uh, privacy, but a friend of mine who's busy, I haven't seen him in a little bit, but, uh, but we're, we're, we're still uh, cool, um, you know, gave him a shout, he gave back a text with his update, right? And so um, there is um, his text to me, gracias amigo, blah, 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 it's the gray, right? And then there is my text back to him, which is the green, 
and that's it. And it was a text and then another text. So you get the idea that these are, that the, the we're, we're not going back and forth a hundred times for, you know, hours and hours and hours, right? We are, hey man, I haven't seen you in a bit. What's up? You need a t chance to time to talk right now or whatever. Or no, he'll spend five, uh, ten minutes and be like, here's the latest from me, sort of like an email. And I'll be like, cool. I, 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 you uniquely um, spelled it out for me and I appreciate it. I kind of know what you're up to, wh where your head's at, what's going on. I'll respond, bup, 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 five, 10 minutes or whatever it is. Here's my thoughts. Here's my whatever, bup, 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 bup. done. We're done. Now, if me and my buddy don't have a chance to talk for you know a couple of days, a few days, whatever, no problem, right? But we're not going back and forth. Hey, blurt this, hey, blurt that, hey, blurt this, Hey, blurt that. Hey, frowny face. Hey, took too long to get back to me. Hey, why didn't you get back to me? No, 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 no. Right? That's just anxious and paranoid. And I think it makes people drift away from each other when those are the metrics they use to, to judge each other and respect each other. Right? And so, um, so that's very, very dangerous. Right? And so the emojis is super dangerous, I find. Right? And um, and when it when it comes to talking with emojis and so on, are we talking to humans or are we talking to robots? Are we talking to artificial intelligence robots, right? I've got a couple of AI bots, I think, on my YouTube channel and a couple of people who've made comments on my channel have warned me, by the way, that's a bot because I just respond back, you know, sure, or want to be friends or cool video, bro, or whatever. And I'm like, thanks, you know, whatever, right? Like, I'll just, I'll, I'll respond. And then someone will be like, hey, by the way, that's a, that's an AI bot. And I was like, yeah, I know, you know, or I, I think it might be too, um, but I'll just respond back briefly so people don't think I'm a prick, right? And, um, and, and I won't get into it much with them. Right. Um, but, but, you know, and I, and I explain, right. Also that these days you might think it's an AI bot, but it might really be a person or you might think it's a person, but it might really be an AI bot. Right. So that's the danger of, of this type of, um, uh, of technology. Right. <clears throat> and, you know, so when it comes to reducing language like this, um, I'll, I'll mention another term, sock puppets right? Sock puppets. So you can look up the term sock puppets, but look up internet sock puppets or online sock puppets, right? Or U.S. military sock puppets, for example, right? And I don't mean those things where you, you take a sock and you, you, you paste little beads on, you know, and you go, you know, hi there, you know, my name is Smiley, Smiley the sock puppet. You know, that's a different kind of sock puppet, right? That's where you take a real sock that, that people wear on their feet and you make a puppet out of it, right? So that's one kind of sock puppet. But the internet sock puppet, this came out in 2011 in an article in The Guardian UK and other articles, right? Where they said US military admits to using sock puppets to uh, help influence online discussion, right? And this was in 2011 and there's other evidence you can find out there of this, but basically the term is sock puppets, right? Because the military apparently, and this is a mainstream UK Guardian newspaper, they're kind of like the New York Times of Europe, right? Um, you know, kind of a big mainstream paper there. This is their limited hangout admission of this. And what they were saying, excuse me, is that um, they were saying the U.S. military was worried about the perception of them when it comes to the war in Iraq or the war in Afghanistan, right? So they wanted to fight disinformation about that, right? People post up, these U.S. military baby killers, this is ridiculous. And Sock Pop would go, that is not true. The military does good things and they can do good things for you or whatever, right? And basically it would be soldiers, right? Controlling who are part of their, their social media army, right? Their online army. The U.S. military has an online, you know, stratcom division, whatever their online thing is, right? And other groups do this as well. I'm not singling them out. I'm saying that this is a phenomena that many different groups, the U.S. military, uh, other militaries, intelligence agencies, corporations, big tech, whatever could use, right? But <clears throat> in this example, one soldier would have a bank of 10 computers, 10 computers, and they would be controlling 10 different sock puppets, 10 different fake social media accounts to influence the online conversation, right? So that was in 2011, 10 years ago, right? It's now 2020. So imagine what's been going on since right? So that's why this is so dangerous. That's why I'm making this video is because this is so dangerous to not, um, to, to think, to take all this stuff straight, right? It's like, it's like, you know, bullshit or bullshit and you, you take them straight, really dangerous, right? As the old saying goes, a thief is bad enough. They take your money. A liar takes your soul, 
right? And so we have to be aware of these things and protect our souls and our humanity from them. So I just wanted to mention that sock puppet thing so you can be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> the final thing I'll say is what can we do, right? What can we do, right? Now, if what can we do is an answer and you just want to complain instead of explain, no problem, leave it there, right? It's horrible what, what, what you know, the system has done to people, but that's often how people feel. What can we do? What can we do? Look at me. I'm a mess. I'm screaming at the sky. I'm making a mess. Look at me. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. What can we do? It's like, uh, excuse me, do you want some help with that? No, just, just shut up. No, no, just, just mess, mess. Want attention for being a mess. Messed up. Want attention for being a mess. Okay, so it's a shame that that's, you know, what the system has made some people like, right? Um, but, you know, um, if enough of us polite patriots who get along better with each other online and especially offline can show other people, hey, you can do this too. Join the party. Don't be a mess to, where, to a point where people you know can't stand you and strangers can't stand you. Be people who take yourselves, other people where you live seriously. Be people who respect each other and communicate well. And someone's a mess. Don't just let them be a mess or don't just let them be a mess making you a mess. Help fix them. Help them stop. Or don't just be a mess. Be cool and ask people questions. And have them share answers and you can you can you can make sure that you're not a mess and other people aren't a mess right so 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 if what if what can you do is an answer then it's you're complaining instead of explaining if what can you do is a question then i and other polite patriots can explain and, and clarify and go well hey <clears throat> here's some answers if they're not a hundred percent you know as comedian on benjamin says I, I may be wrong but i'm not lying and certainly you can take this and you can build on it it's food for thought and you can use it or you can build something better with it but hey it's better than just being stuck in mess what can you do it's more well here's some possibilities and uh, and then good luck to you right do 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 your own thing just do better with them do better than i can do and then tell me what to do no problem it's not just the tv that can tell us what to do. We can also tell each other what to do or at least give each other advice as people who respect each other because that is how we respect each other by being able to talk to each other and share, you know, uh, uh, unique or different things including how we think and how we feel, right? Um, so, um, what can we do? Number one is, is try to talk and type in full words and sentences and paragraphs when you can, right? Try not to. I know. I know it's stylish out there to use U, the letter U instead of Y O U, or to use T H X for thanks or L, you know, and all that stuff. I get it. And in some cases, fine. You know, no problem, right? But I would recommend when you can for your own humanity, so you can be a human being and you can connect with another human being, that you try and type in full words and sentences and even paragraphs, right? You may, excuse me, you may, you may talk to less people, you may interact with less people, but the quality of those interactions will be better, right? So would you rather, you know, barely interact near 500 people? Hey, is, 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 mess near you, 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 mess near you. Or would you rather really interact well with five people, right? This is great, it's nice to meet you, didn't lie, could look each other in the eye. You know, we, we looked at, talked to, listened to each other. That was awesome. It was really great to see you again. Boom, right? Because that's the difference, right? Where you could just be eh, messing near a bunch of people, 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 <laughs> get more messing near people done. Or no, really cool with a few people, right? And um, and so it's it's important to do that, right? And and so consider, you know, doing that when you can, right? Some cases, convenience, this and that, you know, respecting how other people feel. But, you know, honestly, you can, you know, as long as you're not browbeating people or you're not arguing with people, you know, you can, you can, you know, you can get people to kind of respect the fact that you're trying to talk to them, um, you know, in, in more, you know, formal ways, um, if possible. You know, some cases you can't, right? Some cases, excuse me, especially with socialist media kind of, um, you know, encouraging us all to be the same, commie zombies or compliant corporate clones, you'll get some pushback. You go, whoa, you're weird. You know, you, you use words and sentences and paragraphs man why can't you just use you know um you know wtf and then you know go goofy looking emoji you know it's like well you know hey right so at least keep the ability to you know uh, to, to to communicate in words sentences and paragraphs right so that's the first point um you know and try to share how you feel about something right instead of just liking and sharing and forgetting it right so 
how you feel about it is the important thing. It's not just it. It's like, oh my God, crazy news story. Oh my God, crazy fact. Oh my God, crazy this. Oh my God, crazy article, crazy video. And you just, you know, don't repost, but repost, but retweet, but read this, do that, like, right? You can do that, right? But you're not sharing how you feel. And if you're not sharing how you feel about it, then you're not sharing you. So what are you doing when it comes to communicating? Are you communicating? Or are you just like a conveyor belt for, you know, for crap, right? Like a goldfish eating, pooping, and forgetting bits of crap, right? So try and share how you feel as part of this process and how you feel and how you think about something, um, you know, as opposed to just liking, sharing, and forgetting it, right? Um, you know, uh, tr try to... I think I missed something. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, here it is. That's okay. It's coming up. This is good, too. Um Try to make uh, uh, good connections, right? Try to make good connections with people, right? So try to really connect with people, right? Um, you know, even on social media, try to try to make a genuine connection. I've had that happen, right? Where even if it is somebody you'll never speak to, you know, virtually or whatever again, right? Just like in real life, I've had really good connections with people in real life who I've never seen again, right? I go to Puerto Rico, for example, right? I meet some guy in a pool hall. I go stay at his house with his family, it's a young guy and, and his mom and dad and, and people. And boom, it's great. I'm at same place in Puerto Rico. And this is just one example because I've traveled around the world. Same country in Puerto Rico. Met some American guys there from not Puerto Rican Americans, but American Americans, you know, more American American. And um, they're like, hey, you like fresh fish? I'm like, how fresh is it? He goes, we just caught it today. And boom, went to their places, drank some Bud Light. And, and, and they cooked up the fresh fish steaks for us. And we had a great time, right? Never saw those people again, but made a genuine human connection with them, right? So try and make a genuine, uh, uh, good connections with people, even online, as opposed to being just a conveyor belt of crap where you can't even do that, right? Where it's, it's not even an option for you to do anymore, right? So that's, that's a key. Um, try to remember the world before social media and try to save it right? Try to save the world before social media, right? Still cool. You know, you can still do this. You know, you don't have to, excuse me, raise the kids to be sort of an, an anxious mess chasing thumbs and likes for respect, right? You can still save that. You know, for example, um, you know, before social media really kicked off, we used to, you know, people who are sort of red pill vets, right? Red pills versus blue balls vets, right? We used to watch like one to three hour documentaries that really helped explain and, and helped us understand the unbelievable, right? You're coming to this thing. It's like, okay, so this is the world as we're sort of taught it is. And then like in the matrix, you take the red pill and you're like, oh my God, it's really a lot different, right? There's a private central banking system that prints money from nothing. And they, they you could, where does money come from anyway? Why do we have a national debt? Who, who do we owe that money to? They say every year in Canada, they say, we are committed to paying $50 billion towards our national debt. It's like, that's great, man, we should, it's, man everybody hates debt. You know, like, wait, wait, wait a minute, why do we have a national debt? Who do we pay that to? Who gets that money, right? So what's going on? Sorry, I'm fiddling with this because it's asymmetrical, but it happens. Um, and so <clears throat> we used to watch, um, you know, one to three hour documentaries that were carefully put together by people who really wanted to convince us of, of you know, the, the, the veracity of what they were saying, right? And you can still do that today where you can say, like, you know, instead of just a five minute YouTube video or a five minute read on the internet, or clicking on a headline, or just memes and JPEGs, like, oh, here's funny meme, here's funny JPEG, here's funny this, here's funny that, right? And say, no, nope, let's just sit, let's focus, let's lock in, and not just when it comes to a normal sort of fictional movie or Netflix TV show, but when it comes to this type of sort of red pill information, let's really lock in for a good hour, two hour, three hours, and let's zone in on what this person is trying to tell us, right? Less fashionable these days, but um, but certainly something I recommend. But this is this is what we came up on, right? Classic Alex Jones movies like 9/11, The Road to Tyranny, uh, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove, Terror Storm, Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, um, and many others, right? Where young Alex Jones, not older now uh, pundit Alex Jones, where he's mostly businessman and news host and and whatever. When he was younger, now he's like 46. When he was like, you know, 25, 30, right? Young man, he was furiously in the editing bay for 18 hours a day. God, people just need to understand this. How do I make this 
perfect how do i just get all the right facts and information and analysis and how do i just you know so he was he was he had the young man energy to do that <clears throat> now he's got more of the old man as you say i've been around for a while and i know we need jesus at this time and the globalists are bad people right like it's, he's a different guy now right just like a young tupac at 25 would be a different guy at 45 right but but classic alex jones is really great shit, right so you can share that with the younger generation the money masters talking about the history of, of who controls our money supply who are the masters of money that's a three-hour documentary but that really breaks it down or america freedom to fascism by late hollywood producer aaron rousseau who made the uh, movie trading places with eddie murphy before that and made the rose with bett midler an award-winning film before that later on he got into making documentaries discovered the u.s federal reserve the, the the central banksters printing their money supply as part of the international bankster kind of cabal and printing their money from nothing to use it to, to control america and and as part of this network the world right and so we made america freedom to fascism a good hour and a half a two hour documentary exposing all this with tons of experts on it right so i bring all this up to say that you know um helping you know younger uh the younger generation have more patience and more focus and and helping yourselves and helping younger people do that say let's let's just lock into this right we can look at sports for two hours we can look at netflix we can watch old netflix shows again or whatever but 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 some of these classics you know are classics for a reason so i recommend checking them out and passing them on and sharing them and enjoying them with other people to say i know this might be heavy but after the first 5 10 15 minutes once we're into it it'll be mind blowing stuff and it won't be quick hit mind blowing it'll be reality changing and informing and empowering mind blowing so so that's uh, that's that's a key um <clears throat> Try to use more phone calls than than texts, right? Now texting is great. I, I I like texting a little bit here and there, but texting is more for you know details. You know what time can you be there? 7 p.m. Cool. What about this? Text me the address. Cool. But texting actual conversations, that's not as cool as having actual conversations on the phone, right? Um, and using a headset to save your brain from the radiation of the phone if if you want if you want to look into that. Um, but you know, I'll tell you my buddy's story about his buddy, right? So my buddy's telling me a story about his buddy because we're talking about this sort of thing, right? And um, and we're comparing it to us being kind of older guys, right? You know, not old day, not dead day. So you got to teach the young people what to do. You don't want too much to do when you're old, but you don't want nothing to do because you're not dead. So you know, we got we got to talk about these things. We got we got to get them sorted out to our satisfaction, and then try and pass them on to younger people who you know are open-minded and they want to get to be kind of badass grumpy old guys too right um but my buddy um is telling me the story of his buddy right and his buddy and his girlfriend were arguing right and this happens right boyfriends and girlfriends argue right but she couldn't stand the argument she was like i can't stand all this yelling i can't stand this yelling at each other you know about this and that i can't stand it oh it's driving me crazy so my buddy's buddy who was arguing with his girlfriend you know he was like ah fine so he got on his motorcycle, he motorcycled over to a uh, local uh, Tim Hortons coffee shop, right? And he sat there in the coffee shop and he was texting his girlfriend, arguing, right? I can't believe you do this and you said that. <clears throat> uh, waiting for, reading it. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's completely insane completely insane to me it's completely insane as a guy who's had great girlfriends and many great girlfriends good at being a man they could be good at being girls so they're great girlfriends and 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 so on and and so um it, 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 it drove me crazy right when it comes to my girlfriends right they fight with me right they, they, you know, they fight i tell them i'm a strong man so you know you gotta you know be, be on your guard for whatever they're like oh you're strong enough to take this if i got a problem i'm gonna fucking tell you i'm like all right honey all right honey i get it you know so but my girlfriends you know you know they they loved it when if they were fighting with me right because for whatever reason the original argument they lose the debate and they switch to something else switch something else maybe something else is bugging them or maybe they're insecure about our relationship or whatever whatever the hell it is right but they loved it when they got me mad enough because i'm still mad i'm so mad we're fighting this is ridiculous this is a ridiculous waste of boyfriend girlfriend time i have other shit to do you're 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 a source of fun you you're Canadian, hot Canadian girl. You're our most precious national resource. This is a complete waste of resources. This is insane, right? 
just, 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 I'm so fucking mad, right? But they would get me upset, and they would get me to the point where I'd scream, Stella! You know, like like that classic Marlon Brando scene in the movie Streetcar Named Desire, right? Where Brando's, you know, his, 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 his woman is convinced, oh, you know, oh, 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 Stanley Kowalski, oh, I don't know if you really love me. I don't know why I'm with you. You know, I know you've got an eye for other girls. You're a good-looking guy. Other girls must have an eye on you. You know, it's, Stella! You don't understand how much I love you! <laughs> you drive me so crazy! Right? And so, you know, and that, that was a classic scene in the movie. When I, when I did that with my girlfriends, they were like, okay, all right, if he's going to get that mad, um, then, then obviously he loves me. Obviously, obviously. But why would he get that mad if he didn't love me? So obviously, so then they calmed down a bit. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sometimes I argue with you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, so mad. And jaws all jutting, pissed, and you look at him, and Batman jaws. She's like, ooh, that's pretty hot, right? And then whatever, you hang out, you have makeup sex, or maybe you have something else to do, whatever, right? But my point is that that was a, uh, an important part of showing how much you cared was, was, was getting mad enough to, to show it and letting, having your girl know, right? Now, I'm not saying be a, a beast or a bastard. Like, you shouldn't be a bastard. She shouldn't be a bitch. But if you are going to be arguing and that level of angst is present in your voice, in your manner, in how you feel about them, then that's an important part of resolving that. So when it comes to this example of this guy leaving his girlfriend, going to a coffee shop and texting back and forth because she couldn't stand the verbal argument, that is completely insane to me. And that is not going to get her any more resolution when she is probably concerned about how he feels about her. And and texting Stella or whatever is, is probably not going to work, right? So be careful of that. And girls more into the whole groupthink thing, right? More, you know, what are we all wearing? What's the latest this? I can't go out looking like this because we're all supposed to be doing that, whatever, right? They're going to be more herded into this stuff, right? Just generally, just archetypically. Some individuals, notwithstanding some Joan of Arcs doing their thing or whatever, but, but archetypically where men are more individual and stubborn. So we are more likely to resist these types of changes. And you can say to your girl out there, you can talk about this example. If this is something that that's happening to you, right? You can say, no, 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 we can't do that. Right. We are in a relationship for a reason. If there is a problem, we will talk about it and work it out. I will not text you for the next three or four hours when we can solve this in at most 30 or 40 minutes, right? And and I will not have our, our, our relationship flattened by this medium to the point where I'm texting you back and forth and, and that's supposed to, you know, help us solve our problems. No, right? Insane. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm sharing that as part of this, um, you know, this, this analysis. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, uh, another point is try to focus on social media for, uh, for business or to promote key things, right? So, so, so for business, I had a good friend of mine, really good guy, really smart guy, right? And, um, and I recall how he was using Facebook, for example, mainly to promote his business. He wasn't on there trying to get likes or trying to put up silly fun polls or post goofy memes, right? He was a man about his business. He had his wife, he had his kid, he had his business, and he wasn't unfriendly, right? He wasn't unfriendly, but he wasn't into that shit. He was into getting along with his wife and kid and into making himself successful as a businessman. And he used social media as a tool for that, but he was not a fool for it. It was a tool for him. He was not a fool for it, right? So um, use it to promote, you know, um, that or use it to promote um, key things you're doing, you know, key videos or key this or key point or key article or whatever, but something else that is part of you or something that you really care about or reflect, right? It's better to promote a few key things than to spend all day on there like a goldfish eating, pooping, and forgetting bits of crap, right? Um, and, um, you know, and and, and uh, another thing is don't just make semi-friends, you know, you, you soon forget, right? Um, don't just make semi-friends you soon forget, right? Try to share some practical value and not just snarky, bitchy blurts of crap, right? Some practical value, right? Some practical value like this is meant to help you right this is me as a human who's connecting with another human and this is practically something as opposed to just like pretty dumb eh or that was crazy oh, yeah these little snarky bitchy blurts of crap this type of cynical turn the world into garbage crap which is what 
sort of um, you know some of the sort of culture controllers have been behind, right? And so, um, and 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 all of this is try to stay human, try to preserve your humanity, try to stay a human being as best you can. And I hope some of this analysis can kind of help you and others with that. Uh, and there you have it. So BK for manforwars.com and Man for Wars Media. Um, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions, uh, answers, uh, ideas to work together or financial support. See the links below for more. Um, and um, yeah, otherwise I hope this helps and, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. I hope you talk better on and offline uh, soon too. Uh, cheers.